A few months ago, Eugene Behrman said that Drikas Duplessis should have fought Israel Adesanya at UFC 293 six weeks after his fight with Whitaker at UFC 290 where he sustained an injury and said that he should have fought Israel Adesanya injured in that fight and criticized him for not doing it and said that that's not a championship mentality shown by Drikas Duplessis. Since then, CKB has been put under a curse and it's the worst karma I have seen in recent UFC history. It has been so bad for them recently. And that's what I want to go through in today's video. I wanted to make a video about this immediately. And I think I did. But now it's time to make a full video about this. Because I'm telling you, he placed a curse on CKB. Let's listen to his interview. And I have a bunch of things that I want to go through. Including the fact that Strickland versus Duplessis got made. Manel Cap. The based chef himself cooking up an epic response to Eugene Behrman that went a little bit under the radar when it happened. And then Cara France being injured, Dan Hooker being injured, Israel Adesanya being out until 2027 apparently. And also Bobby Green versus Jalen Turner being made that I want to talk about at the end of this video as well. Let's start straight away with the interview and give it a listen. I guess at least there's some relief with Sean, but any disappointed that D Drickers couldn't make this one? Nah, it is what it is. He didn't want to. Um, he didn't want to push through his injury, so it doesn't matter to me. He just that, that's something to do with him and his team, and he has to go back and fight someone else. Yeah, I, I... the smugness of he has to go back and fight someone else. How'd that work out for him, dude? He's fighting Sean Strickland for the belt in Canada, January twentieth, UFC two ninety seven. He has to go back and fight someone else. But, you know what I mean? How'd that one work out for you, dude? And then there's more to this as well. He says another thing down the line in this interview at 1938 in this interview with Submission Radio. Shout out to Submission Radio. I'm never editing my videos. I'm keeping it minimal level effort. Stop trying to convince me to. Here we go. Make that call, but the problem was the problem is if you don't step up and take fights, you go into the pool. That's a fact. You yeah. nothing is in this sport is solid until there's something signed on the dotted line. If he's got nothing signed on the dotted line, then he's out there in the ether. He had a shot. He had a shot. It's the same shot that many of my boys have had who have fought for titles or have titles. You need. You know, some people have to fight. Robert Whitaker, and then six weeks later be ready to fight Israel Adesanya. Some people get given Anderson Silva before they're given an interim title shot against Gastelum. You know what I mean? Some people get given number 15 ranked Anderson Silva for their shot at the interim belt. You know what I mean? It's a bit of a different world for certain people, but either way. Never, never, never. And we fought with horrific injuries because... And we would have fought with horrific injuries, eh? You don't take that lightly. And the problem with the, the problem with with them is they've had an injury, and yeah, it's been a bad injury. So what? So what he says? Yeah, you've taken your shot for granted. You think you're going to get it again, but you don't know what this machine does. You don't know. I mean, apparently it does justice because Drickus Duplessis is fighting Sean Strickland. The UFC, you don't know what they do. You don't know how they twist and turn things. Never feel comfortable with where you are. If there's something in front of you that you've been working for your whole life, don't think for a minute that it can't just be taken away just like that. And he had it, and he let it slip. So he can't, they can't be sitting comfortable thinking that they got the next shot, because they don't. Because I know the sport. The fact is they don't. Because he knows this sport, and the fact is they don't have the next title shot. Hmm, that's interesting. What am I looking at here? It seems like he does in January, whilst not injured. Fair. Wow, it's interesting. But they did. They never took it. And now they now that now now this and they, they should not be sitting comfortable thinking they got the next shot because that's just in this sport, it's just not true. Yeah, man. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, man. Interesting. <laughs> He's got the title shot right here. Such good justice, dude. But he was saying how. Drickus Duplessis should have fought through the injury. And even if you're injured, you're supposed to take these title fights. Basically, what they were saying, in my opinion, is we want to fight Drickus Duplessis injured. And I think the UFC kind of wanted the Adesanya Duplessis fight where Drickus wasn't going to be in the best of condition because they made the Whitaker fight six weeks before the fight with Adesanya 
at UFC 293. So it was all sort of stacked against Drickus to begin with. But there you go. Drickus gets his title shot in the end anyway. So Eugene was wrong about that. But he put a curse on his team that I want to make very clear. Kai Kara France. I'm going to get to Manel Cap in a second, the based one himself. Kai Kara France pulls out of his fight um, with Manel Cap after a concussion. You got to fight through it. You got to have that championship mindset and fight through it, mate. You know what I mean? No. Apparently, that doesn't apply to Team CKB members. Apparently, they don't have to take it and fight anyway, even though they're injured. Little concussion. Get dropped in the gym. Who cares, dude? You're supposed to fight through it, right, Eugene Behrman? And now Kai Kara France pulled out of his fight on that very same card of UFC 293 with Manel Cap. Terrible. Almost like he's cursed. We'll get into a little bit more in a second. But he had to pull out of his fight with Manel Cap. Also pulled out of a potential fight with Manel Cap. And now Manel Cap, I, Manel Cap, I believe, is fighting Mateus Nicolau in a rematch. Either way, Manel Cap even called him out for this in his third language at the UFC 293 press conference. And on, I want to play that as well. Shout out to Mac Life for the content here. But after that, I want that man, the guy got a friends. You know? I want this man. You, you run away from me. You run away from me. Your coach say that you guys should be in through the injuries. Yeah. Your coach say that you should fight in through the injury. He's obviously speaking in not his native language, but either way. So, better, better you come into your injuries, okay? This is what your coach say. You guys have to have the mentality of the champion. Mm -hmm. So you guys have to go into injury. What happened to you? You know, it's the question. Nice from Manel Cap, dude, dude. He's so, I, I, Manel Cap's my favorite flyweight on the roster. I want him to become champion. He's so, he's not, this isn't even his second language. I think his second language is Portuguese. You know what I mean? And he's all, and he's cooking at the press conference just after this news has come up about Strickland coming in and, you know, Kai Kara France being out. Manel Cap's based, dude. Chef Manel Cap, my favorite flyweight on the roster, rooting for him against Nicolau up soon. Um, but he calls out uh, Eugene Behrman for Kai Kara France not having to fight through his injuries. I want to hit this home because it really annoyed me when he made the comments in the first place. And it just seemed it's so entitled from Eugene. I can't just let it slip away into the into the past of the MMA community. And I mean, this needs to be brought forward. What do you know? Dan Hooker's out of his fight with Bobby Green. What happened? Why ain't he fighting through injuries again? Oh, broke your arm? Who cares, dude? As Eugene said, it's time for you to fight through your injuries and take the fight against Bobby Green anyway. He's now pulled out of a fight. Terrible. Now, they've got Bobby Green versus Jalen Turner, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But it's not just Dan Hooker. It's not just Dan Hooker that's pulled out. We've also got a situation where, fair enough, no injuries or anything like that. But Israel Adesanya is looking to come back in 2027. Israel Adesanya, as far as I'm concerned, has pulled out of not only his dog. Uh, he's pulled out of also... 2024, 2025, and 2026. What's going on? He's now not coming back until 2027. You've got to fight through it and take your opportunity and take the fight and be in here and be active. He's lost his whole roster. I want that to be clear. Eugene Behrman said everyone has to fight through their injuries. And all of a sudden, boom, Cara France is out. Boom, Cara France not taking a fight with, with Nell Cap. And now Manel Cap's fighting Mateus Nicolau anyway, even after that fight that he had at UFC 293. Boom, Dan Hooker's out of his fight against Bobby Green. And now Bobby Green's fighting Jalen Turner. Israel Adesanya's not coming back and Strickland beats him. Never has there been a swifter justice served. Not only that, remember he said Drickus ain't getting his title shot? Drickus gets his title shot against Sean Strickland on a fair playing field where he has enough time to prepare and he's not fighting injured. Never has swifter justice been served than this. And now we've got Jalen Turner versus Bobby Green that I do want to talk about. Now, I am going to mention this. This fight's at 155. It's the co-main event. It says it's a lightweight fight at 155. Now, I just want to talk about this matchup at the end of this video now. We don't know. Jalen Turner has missed weight twice now. 
in the lightweight division. Maybe even three times overall, but they've been like separated enough to where they haven't forced him to move up. On full training camps, he's missed weight. He's missed weight on full training camps. You know what I mean? It's not good. And now he's taking a fight. At 155, by the way. On the 2nd of December, in like a week and a half's time. How is he ever going to make 155 pounds? That's the problem I have with this. Now, if Jalen Turner does make weight, or if they do it at a catch weight of like 160 and agree to that after they've now made this fight official, then it might be a little bit of a different situation. But um, I feel like Jalen Turner can beat Bobby Green on, on this on this short of notice. I think he's a really good style matchup to do it. I think Bobby Green's style of catching people coming in with his boxing isn't really going to work on Jalen Turner, not to mention Bobby Green's a bit of a headhunter. Typically, it's just going to be very difficult to catch Jalen Turner on the chin. He's so much taller than a lot of his opponents. He keeps such good range as well. Distance management, very good. You've kind of got to charge forward and try and slug it out with him like Dan Hooker did. Very, very well, by the way. I just don't know how Jalen Turner's going to make 155. So if anyone can clear that up, I don't understand this. You know what I mean? I really don't understand this whatsoever. How is he going to make 155? I just don't know. He hasn't been able to make it on like 10-week training camps before. 12-week training camps. And now all of a sudden he's expected to make it on a week and a half. I feel like he's going to miss weight, not drain himself to depletion, and then beat Bobby Green whilst missing weight. That's what I do think is going to happen. I liked the matchup of Dan Hooker a little bit better for Bobby Green because Dan Hooker will come forward and charge forward. Whereas I think Jalen's just going to front kick him to the body at range, low kick him at range as well. It's not a five-rounder. It's a three-rounder. Jalen Turner's got good takedown defense. He can grapple offensively if he wants to himself. So if anyone gets this to the ground defensively, I think it will be Jalen Turner. I reckon he's going to beat Jalen Turner. Um, would I have liked to have seen someone else get the shot against Bobby Green? I guess we can talk about that. Yes. Big Money Moicano, where you at, dude? This was the opportunity. You said you wanted to fight in December. This is the fight. Maybe uh, Big Money Moik has got a matchup against someone else in the lightweight division. Who knows? But it looks like Moicano's going to have to draw Benoit St. Denis, who I also thought could have been a guy to get this shot. I know people were saying, uh, that's it, Mo Moicano, Benoit St. Denis, or Terence McKinney. First of all, Terence McKinney has not earned a ranked opponent. Okay, he's beat a bunch of absolute schmucks. He has not earned a ranked opponent in any way. He should be looking to build up another two wins before we're even looking at him fighting a number 14 or 15 ranked guy. Um, so I don't know why he was ever in consideration. Maybe just because he could have made weight. But Jalen Turner has got the shot. I think he will beat Bobby Green. I think he wouldn't have taken this fight at 155 unless he knew that he could make 155 or at least as... At least unless he knew he was in shape. You know what I mean? There's no way he's going, yeah, I can make 155 in a week and a half. If he's not at least in shape. You know what I mean? He's definitely in shape. Been training. Been getting ready for some kind of comeback date around December or January. That was his idea for when he wanted to make a comeback anyway. I remember him saying that. I do think he's going to beat Bobby Graham. But I think he's going to miss weight and then beat him. And it's going to be a weird conversation about, dude, he has to move up. He can't keep missing weight. But then people are going to say, but he took it on short notice and saved the event, so it's not that bad. And You know what I mean? It's going to be a bit of a conundrum. But I just wanted to make this video. Eugene Behrman absolutely cursed the entirety of Eugene... B <laughs> the entirety of CKB. That absolute gnome-looking freak. <laughs> Good job, Eugene, dude. Say he's not going to get a title shot. Boom, he gets it. Manel Cap calls him out, cooks up another one. Based Manel Cap gets it done. Cara France injured out of his fight. Dan Hooker injured out of his fight. Adesanya not coming back until 2017. See you later. Goodbye, Toodle Pip. Goodbye.